All right, David Harry here. Now today, I was going to shoot off outdoors to the park with a whole bunch of Rode microphones and this camcorder, which is the Sony AX100. And what I was going to do was do a bunch of preliminary tests between the mics and this camera because I think two or three of the latest mics that I've got, I've not tested them on this camera outdoors yet. So what I was going to do was basically do some practicing and practicing for when I get the ZV-1 because what it is, the AX100 and the ZV-1 have got very similar audio subsystems so the same type of mic interface and stuff and the same kind of control from within the menu system so basically i thought to myself get out there with me ax100 do some practicing so i'm a bit more ahead of myself for when the zv1 comes unfortunately the weather has turned very nasty so the last thing that i was going to do today was get a backpack full of a camera loads of microphones cables batteries all assortment of other things to do with going out and recording these things and also taking out a big tripod and stuff just to get into a park set it all up dead tasty and really good get into my face taken halfway through it starts raining <laughs> as if so i thought to myself what i'll do i'll stay in do a video explaining to people what i think is going to be the best vlogging camera ever now don't forget i'm going to be talking very specifically here about a camera whose sole purpose is really for vlogging although stills wouldn't be a problem and other forms of video recording wouldn't be a problem and the reason why that is is because my idea of the perfect camera is nearly there already which is smartphones so what i'm going to do is explain one thing I think could turn this all upside down and on its head, which would make a camera designed around a smartphone the best vlogging camera ever. So anyway, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to tip the camera over and I'm going to do some stuff on the table. And you're going to have to excuse me because I can't draw that well, but I'm going to have to draw some stuff as well. So anyway, let me get into this. Now, just before I get into a short list of attributes which could turn a smartphone into the best vlogging camera ever, let me just show you a couple of phones first. So there's this one here, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S5. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because this phone is about five years old now, I think, but when it come out, it had a fantastic camera system on it, and it still does today. If you take some pictures with that rear camera there, they can still look amazing. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this particular phone is just to show you, or just to prove that for some time now, smartphones have been very capable of making really good pictures. And then there's this phone here as well, and this is the Google Pixel Mark 1. Once again, this is now an old phone, but just like the S5, it too had a fantastic camera system for when it was released. I dare say both the S5 and the Pixel Mark 1 were quite possibly both either close to the top or probably at the top of the pile of smartphones at the time when they were released for being the best for the camera qualities and stuff. And then I'm going to show you this. Now, this is a very modern phone. I think it's about six months old. This is a Samsung Galaxy A90 5G. Now, regardless of what phone it is, and even to a degree, re regardless of what its camera system is like on this particular phone, what we're seeing here now is a phone where we've got a ginormous screen on it. So although those other phones are really good, this one, you couldn't argue about the size of the screen on that for vlogging. So rather than having a flippy out screen or whatever, where you want to go about getting a screen to look at yourself in, don't think anyone's going to argue that a phone with a screen like this is going to be hard to beat. So that's the starting blocks here for my idea for like the perfect vlogging camera, which is to basically convey this and do a few things to it in order to turn it from a smartphone to a vlogging camera. So what I'm going to do here, <laughs> just bear with us a second. I'm just going to trace around this phone a second because I don't think I can draw on the phone. I mean, I could draw on the phone, but <laughs> I don't think I'll be too happy once I've realized that I've wrecked the phone. So let me just get around here a sec. Okay, only need a little, a little rough thing here. So I've just traced around the phone there. Now what I'm gonna do is just explain 
the first thing to do to make this the perfect vlogging camera. Now bear in mind, I've already identified with the fact that we've got a ginormous big screen, which is brilliant for selfie vlogging. Now, the big problem that I have when I see people vlogging on anything actually, which has got a um, like a screen to the side of where the lens is, is the fact that people are not looking directly down the lens. Now usually you've got a lens either here or you got it here or you got it here or basically anywhere in this region down the side of a phone is where you'll see the lens now what will happen people will start vlogging and looking straight into the lens to start off with if you're lucky <laughs> but then what will happen their eye line will start drifting into the phone into the screen because what they're going to do is see a picture of themselves in the phone there we go. So they're going to see a picture of themselves there. And quite naturally, you get distracted by that and you start looking at it. Well, the thing is, is when you look at that, the person at the other end, the viewer, sees your eye line is off center to the way that they're viewing it. So for me, that's really annoying. But, you know, if we took the camera from the side here and basically put the camera there. So put a hold like at one of those hole punch cameras right in the screen there. Now what's gonna happen, once you start looking at that camera, you are definitely gonna be seeing yourself. Your eye line then won't be getting pulled to one side. So as the person doing the vlogging, you can get a good picture of yourself here and you're always constantly looking directly at the viewer as well. So I think that is probably gonna be the first thing that would make a smartphone the ultimate vlogging camera. Now what I'm gonna do is just randomly go through some other attributes here which I think could be really good for the phone. So let's just say we've identified that, you know, camera should go there. Well, the first thing we do is put a 4K camera in there and we just use the best camera available at the time. Then on top of that, if we want high frame rates and stuff, I think we'll get away with it on a phone because if you use a fairly large phone as well, we have a lot of heat dissipation as well because of the body of the phone and whatnot. And indeed, you've seen a lot of phones go to 4K60 before other devices did. So I dare say phones could actually handle this a bit easier. So you've got you know, resolution, frame rate, and all the rest of it. Then also as well, you could just replicate either one or multiple lenses on the back of the phone as well. So if you wanted to, you could use the phone just like a traditional camera and like, you know, point it away from yourself. But you use the screen here to see exactly everything you're doing. So you're either viewing the front camera and seeing yourself, or you can just look at the back camera and point it somewhere. And again, use a fantastically big screen like that to see what you're doing. Now also, what you could do here, let's have a look, little look at, I mean, I've had a few ideas for navigation as well. <laughs> so what you do, let's just say we trim the, the visible screen area down a bit. Now, we're definitely gonna be shooting 16.9 on the phone. So what we do, we trim into a 16.9 area here, right? That's not quite 16.9, but I think we know what, what I'm getting at here. So that there is the visible screen area. Now, we could do and do this a number of ways. The screen could go right to the edge as it, as it did do with that A90, in which case you could have a whole bunch of user interface or GUI all down the side, all down here and stuff. You could have soft buttons, you could have options or anything. So you could have maybe, I don't know, you, you could have like, you know, your ISO settings on one side and shutter settings on another side. And then with a the touch of another soft button, you've got dedicated other functions down the side, whether that be for, let's say, could, could be for changing resolution, it could be for focus, or, it, or indeed it could just all be for say like exposure and stuff. Then on top of that, we've also got the possibility of a bunch of buttons as well. So usually on most phones, you've already got, say, three buttons or, or what look like buttons because one of them is usually a rocker. I'm not too sure if I can get this in shot here, but I think we'll know what I'm going on about. So there's a power button there. 
and then there is the volume rocker so basically up and down and a power button now the power button could even be that well that could actually be your shutter button you know your record and stop button and then also your volume rocker here could actually be an up down increment button as well so if we have one button here which is the power button usually i mean that could even be the power button to power the phone on and also that then doubles up as your shutter button and then you've got your rocker button on this side next to it so you're up and down here and like i say that could be the interface physical interface section for moving things up and down on the screen so you could do a whole number of things here you could either have a full size screen to the side and put ui all over the place and then you can have a mixture of soft buttons or hard buttons to control ui functions and stuff like that or indeed this bit here on the phone on the front panel these could even just be not 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 even there um, you know not not screen but these just could be just normal standard kind of like side panels on here which have got other physical buttons in them because don't forget at this point we're not looking at a phone anymore because the whole point of this is that it doesn't it, it is not a phone anymore it's a phone being used as the template for a camera so we go kind of all crazy and mad to make this become the best vlogging camera at the expense of what was in the phone now also on top of that you would normally have your USB-C here or something like that well who's to say we can't have USB-C maybe something like a micro HDMI we've got spaces here for a microphone input on 3.5 mil and maybe space down here for a hardware as well uh, sorry a headphone hardware output now on top of that we could also have speakers embedded into the sides here we could also have microphones embedded into the sides somewhere or depending upon the layout of the front we could even have little microphones up here on the front directional mics or something like that depending if that's screen area or not also we could have little speakers down here i think as you can see this starts becoming quite open-ended and there's all kinds of stuff you could do to it then and then like i say on the other side we could have more stuff because on the other side what we could also have there is the same on the reverse as far as the camera structure is concerned I mean me personally i'm happy with a single camera because don't forget some of the smartphones now are now having single cameras which have got like a lot of like capabilities for zoom and also all that computational camera stuff that's going on now as well so if you have a tasty camera on the front there and maybe one in the same place on the you know on the reverse of the phone so you can hold the phone from this side and be shooting traditionally through the rear camera and obviously controlling it in exactly the same way as you could do if it was using as if you were using the front camera now of course in all this i mean think people might go yeah but look you're gonna have a hole there you know in the screen well that's fair enough but that's part of the reason why it becomes the vlog phone as it were or the vlogging camera but don't forget you've always got these here anyway regardless but because we're not looking at this anymore as a phone so we're not bothered about a camera hole being there because it's not going to interfere say with videos and stuff because this is a, this is now a camera so you would want to you know you you would sacrifice like you know a little bit of aesthetics on the front or you'd you'd sacrifice a part of the screen if it meant that it could become a better version of what it could be at the moment which is them down there but now they're there and then like I say on the other side what we do there we put a similar camera on the other side so we're giving the phone a lot of capabilities as far as cameras are concerned so the thing now what we look at is stabilization and i would go as far as to say that whoever comes up with a phone like this should just get straight in touch with gopro and license their stabilization something like this with the stabilization that's in, inside the gopro hero 8 would be mental because don't forget 
this thing here is based on a smartphone and will already have a powerful CPU in it as well. So we could actually go to the extent of going way over the top computationally as far as anything is concerned because the device is no longer trying to be a phone and it's not trying to be the other things a phone tries to be. It is strictly now a camera. So whatever the CPU is that goes into it, that can be just absolutely tailored to do one or two things at only one time. And if that means stabilization, Imagine what you could get out of that then, and then add to that all the computational stuff where the likes of, say, Google and Apple and Samsung are up to. If you start adding all that into the equation, the things like stabilization, maybe autofocus, auto exposure, all these types of things, I think, you, well, basically, I think you, your mind can start running wild with all this at that point. Now, the other thing as well here is form factor. Now, again, that is a large phone there, but you know if you scale it back to the a phone that size as well, or whatever, whatever is deemed suitable. Because don't forget, even a phone this size, that screen is still huge compared to most camcorders. So you know you're kind of onto a winner no matter what size you're at. But you go up to that size, you then also got other benefits, and that is massive battery. Now. This phone, for instance, this has got something like 4,500 milliamp hour battery in it. Now I've been out and I film stuff with this using the rear camera and stuff. I've had it locked off on a tripod doing some things with it. And you know what? I must have been out for about two hours. And when I got back in, there was still juice in the phone. Now you're hard pushed to do that with any small camera. So this is the thing with something this size, you either have a fixed internal battery or maybe, you know, you have somewhere the ability to swap batteries in and out. But nonetheless, the size of the battery that could go into something like this is absolutely huge. So, you, you know, base, your basic power supply is gonna probably be leaps and bounds beyond say something like an action cam and things like that. And then like I say as well, you know, you then got the options for your connections and that. So if you were happy to have something this size, imagine all the connection options you could have, all this like screen estate or the screen real estate for the user interface, or even like I said before, you know, you kind of designate part of the front for solid stuff such as speakers or microphones or buttons and stuff like that. And then I think maybe get down to cost on this as well. Now, this particular phone, I picked this up for £350 directly off Samsung. Now, that was a one-off kind of like special promotional price. But this phone has got a Snapdragon 855 CPU in it. And it's got, a, I think, is it... It's 40 odd megapixel camera on the back. It's actually got three cameras and stuff. And it's got one on the front. Now, when I say I've picked it up at a special price, I think maybe you can pick these up for about £450. Google about to bring out the Pixel 4a, which is probably going to be somewhere in the region of that size there. And it looks like that might be coming out for 349 or, well, $349 or pounds the Pixel 4a may be coming out for. Now, that being the case, if these devices are no longer having to do certain functions that a phone would have to do, then there's less hardware in there which is designated for phones, so brings the cost down. So I don't know. If that one cost me 350 and the new Pixel 4a comes out at 350, I'd say a phone manufacturer who could make something like a smart, well, turn a smartphone into a the best vlogging camera ever. I think if they're happy to sell something for 350 quid as a phone or $350 or 400 or something like that, if they did the same price but it was being as, you know, proper dedicated vlogging camera. One, they'd be making more money at the same price because they wouldn't have the same components or the other components, which, you know, which makes it a phone. You're also into the realms of it being cheaper than most of like the action cams when they first come out and definitely cheaper than most of like, you know, your mirrorless and DSLRs and stuff like that. Anyways, I'm gonna carry on rabbiting on if I carry on like this. So let me get this camera the other the way round. All right, so amongst my mad ramblings just then, hopefully somewhere along the line, I got my basic idea through. I do think 
just moving the lens to start off with is the starting block for something that could be done with the smartphone and turning it into the best vlogging camera ever. And I just thought on as well. So what happens is you get cases obviously for your phones. Well, the case can do a ton of stuff as well because the case could have various fittings on the bottom. So you could have a quarter 20 case. You could also have a GoPro mount case. You could also even have an extended battery case then obviously, you know, you pop your phone into whatever variation of the cases that you're using, or indeed the phone may even have like quarter 20 directly underneath it. But like I say, being able to throw a case on and have the case have other things on it, that, you know, this, it's, it's endless, it's ridiculous. I'm gonna have to shut up. <laughs> I guess, I, I'll just carry on all night. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, there we have it then. So yeah, hopefully this is giving people like, you know, a little bit of a laugh and stuff. Maybe it's, you know, people might agree with me. It could be a great idea and stuff. But anyway, keep an eye on my channel because uh, according to a lot of people at the moment, the best vlogging camera is the Sony ZV-1, which I should have in a few days. And hopefully into next week, I will start battering that with a ton of videos and especially stuff to do with microphones for vlogging. Anywho, I'm David Harry. If you've liked this video, please give it a massive thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to my channel and get all over that notification icon thing for whatever use that is. Anyways, I'm gonna shoot off now. So thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.